he was my father. You know, never missed a game for 20 odd years. So, you know, obviously I've dearly missed. But, you know, that's why, you know, mental health, I'm an ambassador for Alzheimer's. So it's, you know, it's, it's close to my heart. Yeah, mm. mine, I lost my dad through dementia about, what, six or so years ago. And uh, he's, got a, he's got a Birmingham City sign on the wall with his name on it and, and date of birth and death. So, yeah, it's lovely. In my little museum to the blues. I'm sure you're in there somewhere, Robbie. Oh, I, oh, I should be because I was one of the best ever players. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we've had absolutely loads upon loads upon loads of questions from the guys this week. And uh, they're a wonderful lot out there. And uh, you know what? But there's nothing like a Birmingham City fan. They've got a great sense of humour. They've got a great togetherness. They've got a great family attitude as far as each other are concerned. And I tell you what, the, the, the people that have looked out for me and, and the people that I've looked out for has astounded me throughout this lockdown. It's been absolutely super brilliant. Yeah. And uh, if there's anybody out there that does want to talk, I'm available 24-7, seven days a week, apart from when I'm drunk. Which is most times. Because I'll just teach you to drink more. <laughs> 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 you want to go uh, straight, first, with, to go straight yeah, with the questions? The, the, first, the first of the questions, uh, which is probably the most controversial one, but we're going to ask it anyway, Robbie. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, first of the questions was from who? Right, so shall we um, shall we get the two most asked questions out of the way? Because if, yep. like, uh, if I had five quid for every time someone asked these questions, I'd probably have a house as big as yours now, Robbie. <laughs> um, yeah, so is, first and yeah. foremost... It, this is multiple people asking these questions, so there's no point mentioning anyone's name because I'll be probably take me longer to read them out. So, um, first question is, what did you say to be on Dublin? Well, I played with the on Dublin, you know, in, in Manchester United reserves. He was coming back from a, from a leg break, I think he was, and I was pushing to try and get into, you know, into the reserves, and I got my opportunity and played up front with the on Dublin, and we played at Wolves. And I scored two in a 3-2 win. I think Dion scored as well. You know, so I was really close to Dion. Um, and I remember watching the game back, the first one, the 3-0 win, the, the amazing night, which I'm sure we'll come on to. And Dion come at half time. And I remember, you know, um, on the halfway line, you know, giving each other a high five and saying, listen, mate, um, you know, like, good to see you. Um, and then mm. we won the game. And then in the return, you know, it was so heated and so toxic, the atmosphere. It was... What yeah. to play in it was it, you know, incredible. Um, and then you know, I see, listen, doesn't matter if your mates, as soon as you cross that white line, you know, it was my brother, I'd, I'd smash into him in a tackle, you know, because I wanted to win for the Blues and Dion obviously wanted to win as much for, for Villa. And Ooh. I, back, you know, and I in that game, I remember I received the ball on the half turn, I seen Dion, I seen Dion flying in, and so I just jumped knowing there was going to be contact. You know, and he's come in with a... Listen, I thought the, the, the challenge on itself was a red. And you know, as I've got up, you know, I, I just, what, just... What on earth are you doing? Like, in, you know, in no uncertain terms. And he just he just lost it. And, you know, it was just as simple as that. And I just couldn't believe, you know, um, someone of his experience in such a game would lose it in that way. And, you know, it, it's for all there to see. Mark Halsey was the ref. Um, it was a straight red. Um you know, but you know, we've 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 talked since. Um, you know, we we work together now on 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 a in, on one TV channel, and everything's fine. Um, he doesn't live back too far away from me, but you know, I was just shocked, and you know, the way DM reacted in such a huge game uh, just goes to show, though, you know, uh, uh, big occasions, no matter how much experience you have can get the better of some people on that night in my opinion it got the better of deal yeah. do you think it was the atmosphere that caused that because it was it was it was past electric it was it was listen those games where i know my career what it meant to the fans so many years back was it the first one and oh. i see it on tv the other night when the fans were on the pitch and you know um you know you know, Peter Ankle and the ball going under his foot, um, which was to, to this day, I still don't know if he touched it, but I was over I don't to think the he did. I was over to line and said he definitely touched it. Why would and then I was <laughs> um, indeed. Yeah, but you know, the, the scenes to be victorious in those two games and my record for the blues, you know, I like winding Villa fans up was I never lost to Villa my, my time in the blues. You know, probably a more satisfying game for me was the 2-2 two, two 
draw when we were 2 0 down and then two, yeah. the 94th minute. I remember <clears throat> Lee Hendry, who I went on to play with at Derby, you know, um, I think he'd done a Villa podcast and was saying that he, he like smashing it to me. Um, that's, you know, if he could get near me, um, you know, in those games. Um, I think he got. I think he got took off in in that one, and and he was going down the tunnel, and we were losing. I thought we were going to get beat, and then there was did Mikel Forsell get the first, or was it Clinton who got the first on the edge of the box? He rolls. Mik- Mikel, yeah, Mikel. Forsell. Sorry. Clinton got the first one in the first game, and then Stern jumped back post. I remember. I thought yeah. he missed. It was like I thought he he did it over the bar, but it went it went ninety fourth minute Villa Park. We were two 0 down. That for me was was absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then the second most asked question, obviously, is about the move to, to Blackburn and obviously how that went about. And obviously, um, I, I, obviously, people were just asking, you know, if you've got any regrets there at all. Yeah, yeah, I regret. I do regret the way I handled it. I mean, my son's 17 now and he's a scholar at Manchester United. And would I tell him to act in the way I did? No. You know, I would be very angry with him if he did. Um, you know, I remember, so... To cut a long story short, you know, I just signed a new contract four years. You know, I believed I deserved that contract because, you know, Christoph Dugri, who was amazing, by the way, come to the club. And, you know, he was absolutely brilliant, as you guys will, you know, will say in that season when, when he helped keep us up. You know, he was that good. He finished second in player of the year to me that year. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I love the way you get that in. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying, um, I'm just stating facts in this situation. So when I said a new four-year contract, you know, Steve Bruce was who I, you know, who was brilliant for me, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Mark Boyne, um, Keith Birchin, um, all brilliant. Um, 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 ben O was a great man. Um, and I signed the contract. And then obviously Mark Hughes, when Mark Hughes was manager of Wales, he was my he was my hero. He was my idol. When I was a youngster at Manchester United, he gave me a lift home to my mother and father's house in a half-term holiday in his Porsche. And I'll never forget that, you know, because my dad couldn't make it. Um, so he dropped me off. Imagine your hero at such a young age, taking you home, dropping you off because he didn't live his, he didn't live far away. Um, and my hero, I had pictures of Mark Hughes on my wall growing up, Wales icon. Um, and then he's a manager for Wales. And I, and I remember he said, you know, if I ever get a club, management job, so I'll, I'll try and make you my first signing, you know, and obviously then he got the Blackburn Rovers job, and I remember um, in a Wales camp saying, you know, you, you've got the, you're going to get the Blackburn job, um, will you sign me, you know, even though I was still at Birmingham, um, but in that time, I had Everton, who were trying to sign me, um, David Moyes, um, I think they put a £3 million bid in, which I think the Blues turned down. So at this point, I went to see the gaffer, Brucey, and said, listen, Brucey, I want to go. I know I've just had a new contract, but Mark is my hero, is my idol, and I want to go and sign for Blackburn. Um, and Brucey said, you're not, you're not going. Um, and I understood it because, you know, I was, in my opinion, I was a very effective player for that blue side. You know, not the most gifted, but I tell you what, my sheer hard work, and I watched that game back, as I keep alluding to, and, the amount of ground I covered, and I'd give everything for that blue shirt. And um, yeah. so I know why Brucey wanted to keep me. Um, but then, obviously, we were, I remember being, we went to Fulham, do you remember? And I scored a volley. We won 3 2 against Fulham. Yeah. And um, I flipped it up and put it in my left foot. And that was the time when, you know, I knew I wanted to leave, but my performance on the pit, which I was still pr- producing. Um, and then that night, Matt to the dead, I was asked the question, you know, interest from Blackburn. You know, do you want? Are you leaving? And I just said, well, I'm currently a Birmingham City player. And for me, when when I hear players saying that now in an interview, well, I'm still a ex player, which I was a Birmingham player. I know deep down they want to leave because that that's what I was saying. I'm a current. I'm currently I'm a Birmingham player. It's out of my hands. And mm. then I remember I went home and I got a piece of A4 paper out of my out of my kitchen and I wrote on it, "Dear Steve." Please accept that as my transfer request. So the next day, I went into the um, into the training ground and Dwight York, Yorkie, who I was very close to, I said, Yorkie, I'm going to put a transfer request in. And Yorkie said, I'll have you sure, you know, you've got, you're doing great here. Yeah. Um, I said, no, I'm going to do it. So I went upstairs in the training ground, knocked on the door, 
And Brucey opened the door and I just gave him this piece of A4, like paper, and he knew. And I went I went down and his face, and I said to Yorkie, I don't think he's at me. <laughs> so we went to the training ground um, and Brucey's come out and he's gone, get in, get in, um, you know, get in. I went, why, why? I, you know, I've been professional. I just tell you I want to leave. I, I still want to play. I still give my all. But, you know, I just want to leave. So again, anyway, I went went in, went to see Benno, and I was upset because I didn't think he would he would react like that. I don't know why I thought how he would react. I went home next day. I went in again, and I was allowed to train. And I remember, I thought, okay, the ball come to me in training. This is where I was wrong. The ball come to me in training, and I just smashed it like sixty yards. People might say that was normal <laughs> out of play. Lucy um, <laughs> said, "Get in." Get in. And from that minute on, he knew he'd lost me because I was disruptive, wrongly. Um, you know, my teammates, because in the dressing room, I was, you know, I'm sure the lads who have been on here will say that, you know, their horse, I was, I believed I was a great influence in that dressing room um, through my style of play and through my, as a character. And Brucey knew that. And from that minute on, I think he knew he lost me. And, Obviously, Mr. Mr. Gold and Mr. Sullivan didn't want to let me go. Um, and then I was made to play in the reserves at Solly Hull, I remember. Um, we're all, I think it was the biggest crowd Solly Hull that, that that reserve team's ever had. And it was, a, it was a horrible night, you know, and I understand the fans' frustration. I'd let them down. You know, it's, it's a proper football club whose, whose fans, you know, will save their money to go and support the Blues every, every weekend, home and away. And I let them down. I know I did. But I had no other option because the way I was playing and the way, you know, the Blues fans and the manager thought of me, I was never I was never going to be allowed to leave because I was that influential. So I thought I've got to be disruptive to go. But I never once said I don't want to play. I think he left me out of a game and I was in the stand watching a game. I think it was against Charlton on a Monday night. And yeah. I, was ready, I was ready to play. I was ready to play and I would have given my all like I did at Fulham when I knew I was wanting to go, but I scored a, a worldie. Um, so I let everybody down. I let Brucey down. You know, I, there's nothing more <coughs> I would have liked on my old clubs is to go back and walk on the pitch at half-time and, you know, get adulation for my time at those clubs. But I know that Leicester, I can't do that because when I signed for Birmingham, people say I kissed the Birmingham badge. You know, when I went to the way I left Birmingham and when I scored for Blackburn, I went, you know, you know, Running round, people said I should have celebrated. Um, so those two. I don't agree with that. You've got to celebrate a goal. If you score a goal, you've got to celebrate yeah. it. And but it was the way no. it was. It was not soon after, and it was really, it was really still in fresh in people's minds the way I conducted myself. And I was wrong. I was wrong. And mm. you know, I had an amazing time at the Blues. But you know, if, would I do the same again to get what I wanted? I've just said I wouldn't tell my boy to do it. But it was so. It was such an opportunity, and it was more money. Listen, I'm I, listen. It's your careers, you know. It was more money. It, I think it was about ten thousand pounds a week more, which is life changing amount of money for anybody. And yeah. it was, it was closer to mum and dad. You know, I've just said that. You know, I've explained my dad had Alzheimer's at fifty eight. You know, fifty five. Um, you know, I give him a lump sum to help him retire um, because he wasn't well. There were signs at fifty but he wasn't diagnosed at 58 so you know where I live now in Cheshire is only 55 minutes from my mum's house where when I lived play for the Blues I lived in near Stratford upon Avon so that was about two and a half hours so you know people say that you know I wanted to move closer to the home but when a newspaper knocked on my mother's door and measured St Andrews to my mum's house then my mum's house to Ewood Park you know Birmingham was closer but you know, what people didn't understand was I lived in near Stratford about Avon, which is two and a half hours from Mum's house, where where I live now is the same house when I signed for Blackburn, it's fifty five minutes away. So, you know, it was it was a factor, definitely a factor. And I do regret the way I conducted myself, but do I regret being closer to mum and dad? No. Do I regret playing for my hero? No. Do I regret earning more money in that time? No. You know, and do I regret playing in Europe, we finished six, you know, so I helped keep them up that season. You know, I mean, yeah. the thing is, we, I played my second campaign in, in, in the Europa League, so that wouldn't have happened with the Blues. 
Can I just say you played? Sorry, Nick. That is an absolutely brutally honest and straightforward account. And I tell you what, I think everybody commends you for that, mate. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I really do. You know what? You've, you've, you've said you were wrong the way you did it, blah, blah, blah. And do you know what we're going to do now? We're going to move on to another subject. Because I tell you what, that's cleared it up. Yeah, it's all done and dusted now. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Would you say you played your best football of your career for us, Robbie? I was, I was effective. You know, I was effective for Leicester. Um, I was effective for the Blues. Um, I was very effective for, for Blackburn as well because, you know, I worked with some great managers, Brucey, Mark Hughes, Nigel Clough, you know, started with Sir Alex, Eric Harrison, the, for me, an incredible youth coach. Um, who else have I worked for? You know, uh, anyway, Martin O'Neill. Yeah, Martin O'Neill, exactly. Martin O'Neill, the names. Mm. O'Neill, Clough, started with Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, I know he didn't manage me, but he overseen it. Um, Clough. So I played different types of football wherever I went, you know, in terms of Leicester. You know, I was started as a wing back, a more aggressive set midfielder. The, the Blues, you know, I liked, I liked when people doubted me. And I remember, I'm sure Tom Ross, who, who might ask, who probably asked the question. I remember the first interview I'd done with Tom, um, you know, when, he said to Steve, I think, why are you signing him? And I remember, you know, saying to Tom in the first interview, you don't rate me, do you? Or something like that, those, those words. And I said, you know, just watch me and I, I will prove you wrong. Because I believed in my, I wouldn't say ability, I would say I believed, of my, I believed in my character and my influence on the pitch on a team. You know, I wasn't, I remember a game we played against Middlesbrough on a, on a, on TV on a Monday night, I think, and it was nil-nil. And I remember, there's a famous picture of me and Danny Mills. I went to smash him, missed everything. It was yes. nil, and he grabbed me by the throat. <laughs> but the game was, it was, it was nothing in it. It was just dull. It was no atmosphere. And that was about the twenty something minutes. And I remember something needs to happen here. So in my head, I thought, right, I'm just going to go and smash everything. I don't care if I get a yellow card. If I get a red, I'm just going to smash everything. <laughs> missed everything, and you know, like Danny grabbed me by the scruff for the next. That moment, the crowd lifted. We got a quick free kick up, up, about five minutes later. I put it down. We scored. Then I whipped one in, in the top corner. Um, so, you know, my influence, my effect on the Blues in that period, I believe, was instrumental. And, you know, I always laugh and joke. And, uh, you know, Mr. Gold and Mr. Sullivan were great with me. And I, I always said to Mr. Sullivan in, in the Play of the Year dues, when I won most of them, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I must be your favourite. <laughs> I must be your favourite ever Blues player. I think I was close behind, I think Trevor Francis, and I think it was me. So, you know, it was a great time for me, a great time. And I do regret it. I do regret it because... We're over that now. It was a wonderful time. I do, I do, I'm honest. Yeah, we're yeah, over yeah. I could no, really you say, I'm not bothered, but it does really... You know, now I say to my boys, you know, let's go and watch Birmingham in a big game, you know, and go on the pitch at half-time and... Not because I want people to applaud me, but just to say sorry and say, listen, I made a mistake. Everybody made a mistake. You've done it. You've done it. That time, I give every game, I give absolutely everything. There was one game with, I think it was, have I said it? Was it for Leicester, Birmingham, Newcastle away? I think it was Leicester when I, when, was it Leicester? Uh, I can't remember when I was not full tilt, but every other game, I give everything I got. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you mentioned Paul Devlin earlier. Um, and um, Paul Devlin's asked me to ask you. Well, Paul, Paul Devlin's basically said, "Ask Sub about when I used to get him in the death choke when we used to room together on away trips. He'd always want a rest. He'd always want to wrestle most of the time, and, and most of the time he'd be naked. <laughs> he'd always end him choking him out." My roommate, great. Listen, you know, one of the reasons you know that squad was so good. You know, when household names, you know, like in that first game against Villa, they were household names. We went, you know, you know, you look at Sheffield United now in the Premier League. They're, I, they're very similar to us, you know, work the yeah. way through divisions, not household names, but become stars because of what their attitude, their application, their character, their desire. And our Birmingham team was like that. You know, um, Dev, you know, the horse, Ben Owen goal, um, you know, Damien Johnson. Um, Percy and um, Brian Hughes and I could 
then we signed Clinton. But there was my roomie, and you know, um, great, great character. You know, underrated. You know, great on the right hand side. Um, yeah. But yeah, we used to wrestle every Friday night. But because Dev was stronger than me, not now, um, but because he was stronger than me, he used to let. The, the rule was that after <laughs> after dinner, he I he would let me have the first ten seconds to get him in a in a hole. Um, but he'd always get out. Of <laughs> But honestly, some some Friday nights before a game, we'd be wrestling for about an hour. We would be dripping in sweat, you know, <laughs> curtains right over the wall, beds everywhere, cuts and bruises uh, from Friday nights. Me and them wrestling for two story. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so a few of our viewers now are asking a few questions. Um, so Stephen Gill's asking, what was your favourite goal, goal for Blues? Um, and who was the easiest to wind up in the, in the squad, that you, obviously from your time? Oh, they were all easy to, to wind up. I remember, you know, Nicol Vassen, um, you know, we had a coming together in the, in the um, training ground, in the, in the dressing room, um, because I used to, listen, any weakness in somebody in the first team, you know, I was always there for the for the youth team and, and encourage them and help them. You know, I'm involved in grassroots now. I've got a part of an academy and I'll, I'm always encouraging the youngsters and whenever they train with the first team. But the first team members, I would always wind up. Any little sign of a weakness, I would be on it. And, you know, Nickel, you know, Nickel, um, I think we played away from home and he, he was struggling to get the ball up over the halfway line with his kick in. He just, good goalkeeper, fantastic goalkeeper. But I was like, any chance you get that ball over the halfway line? And one occasion, <laughs> I got him in training, and he snapped and he came over to me and um, he grabbed me by the throat. So as I stood up, my head, unfortunately, went into his chin and I think I cut his lip. And um, Brucey called us into the office and um, he, you know, I was wide, even going up to see Brucey because he'd heard we had a coming together. But I was saying, listen, he's not going to let me go. I'm his best player. You might. I'm just going to say to me or you. He, me or you, he's got to leave. <laughs> Won't be me. You know, even going up the stairs, winding him up. And, um, so I, I was always winding people up. And, you know, Clinton, um, everybody, Dev, um, you know, but it, the horse, I remember horse when I played against Fulham in the Cup for Leicester on penalties. Um, mm. We beat them to go to the final. I think it was the quarter final we beat them in at Filbert Street. We were 2 0 down. We equalised it. Um, went to extra time, 2 2, went to penalties. I remember I took one before horse, and as I'm walking back to the centre circle, horse is walking towards me, and I'm as he's walked past me because I knew he was he used to be a builder, didn't he? I said to him, I said, um, you know, when you miss this horse, you know, um, you can come and build me a patio, and um, he was raging. <laughs> and when I signed for the Blues, the first day I bumped into was the horse, and he reminded me because he was a strong boy, but what a character, you know, fantastic. The third goal against Villa, you know, that was a horse, you know, very similar to myself, you know, underrated, work ethic, desire, you know, and but what a squad of what characters we have. But I would wind every single one of them. Uh, Paul Devlin has just says, uh, Sav, you're out, you're out of his white division now. Yeah, I, I well, I've, I've not seen Dev in a while, but you know, I'm in the gym every day, so you know, I, I suggest we do a celebrity. Hilton show um, wrestling match me and Dev, but it wouldn't last oh. long. I'd just throw it. In. Do it. Do it for charity. Oh, we'll do it for charity. We'll do it for charity. He's a great lad. Great lad. Yeah, he's but a good I, lad. All, all the guys I played with, you know, all the guys, you know, that that squad was, as I said, it reminds me of Sheffield United, you know, because you know Dev was at Sheffield United, wasn't he? It just reminds me of a no superstars, you know. And that game against Villa, Pitt, you know, was that, uh, you know, was that in full glory? Where, you know, was it Olive Melberg that said, you know, I don't even know who they are or something? I, I, yeah, there's some quote, yeah. and I said it in the, in the Didn't interview after when I wasn't the Go on, say, say again, Nick. Didn't somebody pin that up in, in our dressing room? Yeah, yeah, Brucey pinned it up. But that's listen, it was just silly, you know, you know, especially it was ahead of that game where. You know, listen, Olaf Melbourne was a wonderful player, as most of the Villa players were. Um, but on the occasion, you know, Brucey got us that fired up, but with, a, with you know, inner aggression where, you know, on those nights, you know, to this day, they're amazing memories. 
Yeah. Was absolutely. that probably the best atmosphere you've ever played in, do you think? Yeah, Millennium Stadium, Wales against Italy, that was amazing when we beat them 2-1, 75,000. But in terms of sheer, you know, I played in Nottingham Forest, Derby as well, which is good, Blackburn, Burnley, which is good. But Birmingham Villa, considering it was such a long time since they played each other, and a night match as well, two night matches, wow. Um, just under the floodlights. Villa Park's a, 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 you know, an unbelievable ground, one of my favourite grounds, because um, I never lost there, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, two great, two great occasions. <clears throat> One of your favourite grounds because you never lost there. Is that what you just said? I don't think I lost there, did I? I think I, I might have lost. I think my my record against Villa in my career was I think I played fourteen and lost one, and that was in that Derby side six nil. Uh, we lost at Pride Park this, this, the season. We went down with eleven points. Yeah, but, brilliant record well, that is. <laughs> Um, Stephen Cowles, Stephen Cowles asking, who do you who did you enjoy playing alongside the most of Blues in midfield? Um, see, people will say Alu Cisse, but I remember, you know, me and I, we were quite competitive. You know, Alu was 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 brilliant for us, brilliant for the Blues. You know, his his once again is, I would say, there were no superstars in the team until Christoph come in terms of sheer ability. We were all yeah. much muchness. You know, nobody had that X factor that could turn the game single handedly. You know, Stan Lazaridis could on his day, you know, on that left hand side with his, you know, with his drive and his pace. Um, but <coughs> really, in our very, very structured workman like, but we had no X factor until Christoph come. Um, you know, Alan Cisse was, was great to play with. You know, if I, if he missed you, I'd get you. And if I missed you, you know, if I missed you, he would smash into you. And I always knew, you know, but we were competitive in training. I remember Alu on one occasion um, would smash. We both train how we played. So we would smash into people in training. And on one occasion, I remember Brucey had to calm everybody down. And Alu smashed somebody. And I thought it was unfair. And he was not on my side. So I thought the next one, he's getting it. And um, um, I smashed it to him. And I think he was out for about five or six weeks and Brucey went mad because, <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't train him because that's how we played. That, that's, that's how we all trained and played. Um, but it was competitive because we, we couldn't do anything else. But I just remember um, we, we had a little gripe against each other in training. Um, who was the hard man as such? Like we, none of us are hard. We were just com- combative. And I remember that <coughs> we, had, we smashed into somebody uh, you know, and I thought he was a bit aggressive, so I thought, right, next one. So he had it, and he was out for five weeks, and Bruce wasn't happy. <laughs> you talk about being the hard man and, the, and all this, that, and the other, but like you were, you were, you were quite quite different, really, um, when it came to going out with the boys and one thing or another after after a game, before a game, or, or whenever. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, all my clubs, you know, I wasn't a drinker, um, not at all, because I was of the the. It's a short career. I worked ever so hard. You know, when you when you're told you're not good enough at 19, you know, by Manchester United, and then you go to Crew, and all I ever wanted to do was be a footballer. You know, anything I, everything was my life was football. So I wanted to make sure that I give myself every opportunity to be that. And when you get told by Sir Alex at 19, you're not good enough, and then you know you go to Crew, and then you're playing in the B team for a year, and then you you work your way back. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know. Throughout my career, whether it was two, three, four, five, twenty years, which it turned out to be, that I would make the best of it because there'd be plenty of time for having a glass of red wine or or anything after. So I was never a drinker. You know, people you know, when people think of me, they'll think of you know the hair and you know a bit flash. You know, I loved cars. I loved I loved cars, and I would say to anybody that out there that when you're when you're earning Premier League money at a time. You know, I was very sensible with it, but I loved cars. I loved cars, and you know, I could never have imagined driving a nice car when I was in school, watching my mates' brothers driving around in an XR2 or an XR3i. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I, I was. I liked the car, but I wouldn't drink. I'd hardly ever drink, and to this day, don't really like drinking because I knew that if I drunk, I would not be able to give everything I got for that side. So, you know, I would miss nights out with the lads. You know, I was a bit boring, really, you know, a bit boring on nights out because, you know, I just wanted to get home and prepare for the next day. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Frank Penny stuff. Woods asked, so, sorry, Nick. Frank and honest stuff, that is cool. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a few more questions. Um, Penny Chip Woods off. asking, who, who was the best manager you ever played under? As I say, different, you know, Martin and he was amazing. You know, yeah. amazing. Um, would get the best out of me by probably being derogatory towards me, but I, he knew how to handle me personally. You know, yeah. um, you know, the famous quote when he said, I, I lack one thing and what was that? And that was ability. Um, and I wanted to prove him wrong. Brucey was great. Brucey yeah. knew how important I was to that team and treated me that way where I felt a bit special. Um, you know, not, not in terms of taking, you know, the mick out of, out of stuff, but knew that if I had a little niggle, he'd say, just have a day off there because I was that important to the side. So he knew how to handle me as well. And Nigel Clough, I must say, you know, that the, latterly in my career, what a, what a, what a guy. And, you know, emphasised really by recently just walking away from Burton in this, in this you know, unprecedented time you know, because of the financial trouble League One and League Two clubs will be in. You know, just walked away and that just sums that man up. You know, a great family man, great morals. And with me, towards, the, you know, in, in my last year at Derby, you know, let me do the media. Um, you know, if I played well the weekend, you know, he'd say to me, how are, you, how are your family? I'd say, fine. He said, right, just prepare. You, you're playing next Saturday. See you Friday. Stay at home with your family. Look after them. Just mm. an amazing way he treated me. And, um, you know, I was very low at Derby when I went on low to Brighton. You know, it didn't work out for me in the Premier League. Um, probably, you know, Paul Jewell, who I respect massively, bought me. <coughs> Faith in me, trusting me to keep them up, and I couldn't do it. You know, after recovering from a leg break, wasn't the same player. You know, I had to fight my way back into the derby side after training with the kids, the youth team. You know, it was a horrible part of my life at 35, 36. But you know, I fought my way back, and Nigel made me captain, and, and you know, retired at 30, nearly 37. So, yeah, mm. very fortunate. So, I'm not going to say one manager was better than the other because. You know, they were all great for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. Probably, and you one, might... one thing, you've, we, we're mentioning Nigel Clough there. Do you think he would be a very good fit for Birmingham City? Obviously, with the vacant manager's job coming up at the end of the year. Um, what Nigel Clough can do is he can work on very small budgets, as shown with Burton, as shown, you know, um, you know, when I was at Derby, you know, we were in the Premier League and then obviously, you know, Nigel had um, all the players at Derby who had been on Premier League wages, so he had to fight his way through that. And I think we were progressing every year until he until he lost his job, which I thought was wrong. Um, you know, I wasn't there then. But then he you know, Sheffield United, Nigel was brilliant. You know, he I think he saved them from <laughs> LA got onto two up finals and finishing a playoff spot, losing losing a semi final, I think it was it six five an aggregate one of the semi finals of Sheffield United got to two semi finals as well. Got Burton to the semi-final of the, of the Carabao Cup, losing to Man City. You know, getting Burton promoted. You know, Nigel Clough for me can work within a budget. He finds little gems. You know, and I tell you what, he would. You know, it's it's a very very good shout. He's a he's a good honest guy, a football man, knows his stuff, treats people well. Um, yeah, yeah, Nigel Clough would be a, a you know a, a, a fascinating shout. Mm. Craig Courtney's asking, is it is it correct that Robbie had, had agreed to sign for Blues with Brucey before the playoff final? So before we played Norwich in, in Cardiff. Um yeah, was you, Mark was Boyd, you... Mark, 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 so so see Leicester fans will always say that, you know, why did I leave when Leicester got relegated? But I think it was at the time it was Mickey Adams and, and Dave Bassett who were the managers and you know I got a phone call saying, Listen, we've got to cut the wage bill, you know, we're, we're, you know, it's difficult times. You know, would you be prepared because you've done exceptionally well? Would you be prepared to leave? So I, I had no thought about leaving, and I was playing for Wales. And I remember Mark Boyd, who I played for with Wales, was assistant manager. And bef- I think they were having their pre-match meal. And I said to to, to Bo and to Brucey, if you win today, you know, sign me. Um, and then obviously they won on penalties, didn't they? And Darren yeah. Carter for the goal. And yeah. we all was laughing and joking. Says, yeah, it'll happen. And then. Obviously, it happened. So yeah, it was it was a bit tongue in cheek, but you know that's what upsets me. Leicester. Listen, I shouldn't have kissed the Birmingham badge when I went to Leicester, but I just thought that when I run out, 
I got booed off some Leicester fans. And I shouldn't have reacted, but again, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, I'm impulsive. Um, but yeah, it's true. I, 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 the deal, I, the, I said to Bowen, to Brucey, tongue in cheek, I'll, if you win today, I'll, I'll sign for you. But, you know, I never, I never wanted to leave Leicester. It was never in my mind. But I, I, I believe that I left Leicester because of the financial situation. They got decent money for me. Mm-hmm. Sure. Nick, sorry, was you going to say something then? No, 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 crack on with another question, bud. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, so we've already had that one. Bear with me a second, sorry. I'm, I'm scrolling through and I'm getting a lot of the same ones. <laughs> um, so one from me, actually. Any more good pranks you can tell us about that you haven't said? And also as well, who, who had the best and worst tasty music and who was the best and worst dresser in the squad that you was there was in? Never, there, was never, there was never really any music in, 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 the, in the Blues dress room. Um, um, huh? No, not that I can remember. Um, um, one of the pranks, good ones, was on um, Keith Burton, who was who was um, one of our assistant managers. I remember on April Fool's Day, um, I was new to the club. It was that my first season there. And on April Fool's Day, I didn't live far from the Birch. I think Birch lived in Solihull or Tanworth or somewhere like that. And I remember I was I lived in. I'll tell you where I lived. You know. Cofton Court, Alcester. Yeah, yeah, I lived in Warwick I when I was. Lived, so I lived where Cofton Court was. I lived on that road and used to go through the the what they call the water across the road, the um, the Ford. Ford. Yeah. And I lived in the farmhouse there. Um, um, quite vulnerable, you know. Long story, but one of the reasons why, as well. I wanted to leave the Blues in that time was when I announced that I was leaving, my house got attacked. You know, I had four people to turn up with balaclavas three o'clock in the morning. They were obviously, I don't know what was going to happen. Um, my my, my uh, countless, you know, people knocking on the window in the middle of the night. Um, you know, but it was quite scary and quite vulnerable. My wife felt isolated, you know, because it was a beautiful house, but it was just, it was on the, on the main country lane and it was, you know, Villa fans, Birmingham fans, but I'll never forget the night when I'm going off topic a little bit. But when three o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, we heard a car pull up, and I we had the big old fashioned windows. I, I went to the front of the house, pulled the window up, and there was, you know, four people there in balaclavas outside the house. And my wife was never the same since. So you know, all these factors contributed to me leaving. Uh, listen, we could have moved house, of course, oh, of course we could, um, but you know. I used to travel from there every day to, to the Blues training ground. I remember one morning I phoned Bert up on his phone and said, Bert, I'm, I'm, I brought down on the on the roundabout, um, I think it was Junction 3, is it? Um, junction 3, was it to the training ground, to West Hills, off the yeah. M, M42? Is it That's junction it. Three? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Redditch turn off. Yep. The Redditch, yeah. So I said, I, I, Bert, I've brought down. I mean, I had a, I had a sponsored Rover at the time. I said, Bert, I broke down. I, he said, right, where are you, son? I, he said, he's great, the Bert. He said, I'll be there, I'll be there for you. So anyway, I think it was about 20 minutes away from the training ground. So anyway, he, I said, bring me when you're there. So anyway, I've, so I've I've got a different way and I'm at the training ground. So Bert <laughs> has, has, has left. Bruce, he said, go and pick him up. Anyway, he's ringing me. <laughs> he's ringing me. He's ringing me. He's got a session to prepare as well. He's ringing me. He said, where are you? I said, I'm here, I can see you. Go round one more time. So I, I'm in the lane back there. <laughs> See you waving at you. And he goes round about four times. And then I just burst out laughing. He was raging. Brucey wasn't happy either. <laughs> but because I was because I was doing well and because I was a character, I'd get away with it. I would never have done that at a time if he was struggling, do you know what I mean? Even though it was funny. But there's some things you can get away with if you're, you know, playing well, if the team's doing well. You know, and little stories like that, you you know, you miss, you know, you miss. Yeah, sure. We asked you to do a 1 to 11 and uh, you've, you've declined. Yeah, because, you know, I always get asked this and, you know, I might have done them in the past. But, you know, the more I, I see 1 to 11s and I always think that, you know, to be a footballer at any level, you know, and I've said this to my son, um, whether it's, you know, if, you, if you're a semi-pro, if you make a <clears throat> living out of football in League 1, League 2 and you can you know, pay bills and have a life playing football. It's the best life you can ever do. So for people to get to, 
you know, to the elite level, Premier League, you know, to be in a one two eleven. I just believe that I respect everybody I played with and people, you know, players who I played with, like Brian Hughes, he would be in there for ability, but then Alou Cisse would be in there for, you know, his tackler, my partner. Then you've got Clinton Morrison, he'd be in there for the goals he'd scored against Villa. But then Mikel hey. Porcel was brilliant. Then you've got Christoph Dugri, Stan Lazarides on the left, amazing. But then you've got Emil Eski and Muzzy, is it? Do you know what I mean? So I just think it's, for me, I wouldn't do it because I just think that I don't like to do it because I don't want to leave anybody out because I know how hard those people work to get to the position they're in. And for me to say I preferred he was better than him because a 1 to 11, you know, you either pick your mates, pick your close mates, or you, you know, some of the Blues players might not like me. And that's why I wouldn't be in their team because I'm sure a bit sure. effectiveness for that team. Let's be fair, I should have been in every Blues team. Um, but, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, um, and me, but, and Paul, I'm and not, Chris. I'm gonna, yeah, but I'm not going to do a one to 11 because, you know, I'm not going to leave Paul Devlin off, who who was brilliant, or Jeff Horsfield out, you know, but on ability, you'd have to put Christoph Dugri and Mikko for selling. But I just think that I respect all the players I played with at the Blues, so that's why I don't want to leave anybody out because they were all amazing at diff- for different for different reasons. Yeah, and who, was the, who was the best and worst dresser then in the squad in your time? Um, Benno was, was shocking. Um, Benno was, Benno was <laughs> I wonder why everybody named for Benno. They shocking. all say Benno, don't Benno they? <laughs> um, 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 who else? Um, Stan Lazaridis, shocking. Kenny Cunningham, shocking. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. This could have been your 1 to 11, you know, the worst <laughs> dressed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, was some, there was some poorly dressed players in that Birmingham dressing room. So, yeah. And the best, who, who would you say look the smartest? Me. <laughs> you? <laughs> obviously, obviously. Did you expect obviously. anything different? <laughs> I, I remember, I remember going back to the day. I've really... still got a suit. I've still got a suit upstairs. It was a crazy time. And I remember I've got a, a, a number eight. Number eight's my number. And I've got a, a, um, a suit. And I've got um, a number eight embroidered in like fake diamonds into it it's horrific it's oh, horrific okay. and do you know do you do know, so i've had it made especially for the blues do you ever do auctions or are there any giveaways oh my god yeah we're doing a uh, huge thing for all the time but well, if what i'll do is what i'll do is if i find it um if you got a minute if i run up and try and find it i'll give it away yeah yeah yeah, yeah, of course yeah, yeah. Talking about it. give me a minute give me a minute okay Boys, ladies and gents, what an interview this has been. This has been an absolutely eye opener. Wow. It's been a pleasure. Uh, been a pleasure to be a part of so far. Brilliant. Mate, I tell you what, this has been superb. What mm, do you reckon, Chris? Yeah, the the shout, the shout box going crazy. I think there was something like uh, 200 comments within the first 15, 20 minutes. It's a shame. Really? Do you want to ask him, Chris? Chris, do you want to, I can't, obviously, I can't look at both. So, do you want to ask him any live questions as well? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll wait till he comes back and uh, I'll go. Yeah. Go through, but um, yeah, no, Great. you know, what an, what an absolutely wonderful explanation to the, the time that he was at Birmingham, yeah, and to the time that uh, up to when he left, you know, and you know, he's put he's put his hands up and said, Look, you know, I did it wrong, got it wrong, got it yeah, wrong. yeah. I think that's, that's, what, that's, that's what's coming over on the on the shout box, really. Is um, he's, yeah, um, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. Hon- he's honesty, very... he's honesty, really, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's buried the hatchet that has now, hasn't it? We all understand, you know, we all kind of like, although obviously at the time, we, you know, it wasn't great the way he left. But, yeah. you know, we, we can kind of like accept it more now, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Because we yeah. know. I think, I think basically what, he, what he's saying is that I was a prat. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and admitted it, admitted it. He's, well, also, he's, so he's also not, 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 not been afraid <laughs> to answer any questions. I, I, I can't find, if I dig it out, if I find it, I'll dig it out. You can have it and you can auction it off or whatever you want to do with it. If, if I can find it, I can't find it. Yeah, go on. It probably yeah, yeah. Be, I'd love it for my museum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not yeah. out of breath there, are you, Robert? I'm out of breath, yeah. Yeah, no, we're, 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 we're recently, <laughs> we're recently <laughs> raising funds for uh, PTSD, uh, Robbie. Uh, but we also do stuff for Brums Homeless uh, and, and various other local charities as well. So, uh, but if, so I, yeah. if I find anything, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a dress and send you something. Yeah, sure, that's fantastic. And of course, we do Accessible Blues as well. Our good friends at Accessible Blues. There's my COVID-19 Birmingham City Accessible Blues mask. Yeah, they're our disa- really? disabled friends. They're uh, good, good luck. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's the Blues Disabled Community. Lovely people. 
I don't know, so, so many of them watching this on, on, on a Monday night, and it's this is why it's been so important to keep this up and keep this going. Brilliant. And yeah, you know what, Robbie, we could sit here and talk all night. We're not. We're going to do the hour because that's what we've committed. To, is that and it? And we're really grateful. We'll do, for you more, we'll do a bit longer if you want to. I don't mind doing a bit longer. We got another twelve minutes left. Yeah, we have got another twelve minutes left. Loads, loads of time. I'm left, happy. Yeah. To, do, you want, do you want to do fifteen extra time? Ten minutes because it's such a special guest. We'll go five minutes over. Okay. It is a, it's our tenth year. Yeah. It is our tenth year, yeah. Of course, yeah, it is our tenth year, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Robert, tell us a bit about your son. Then he's just, he's just. Sorry, Nick. Go on. So my son. So my son. Yeah. So what I'm, what I, as I've alluded to, um, you know, my two big passions now are, you know, raising awareness for mental health, you know, and Alzheimer's, and also grassroots. I don't know if you see me on the government briefing. Um, yes. You know, not so long ago, when you know, I just, I just felt that, you know, the grassroots was getting overlooked a little bit. It was all about bringing elite sport back, which I agree with, because if elite sport comes back, you know, um, the income and the economy and the money raised can, hopefully some can get, you know, put back into grassroots. Um, so I'm huge. I've got, a, I've got a team myself, which my youngest son plays for. And I just think that, you know, it's so important that the grassroots aspect and you know, I'm involved in an academy and, um, you know, what I do is now I try and re rehabilitate the players who have been told at you know such young ages to get rejection and told you know you know you're not right for that football club at that particular time because of A, B, or C. Um, it's very difficult. I was told at 19, and it's it's heartbreaking. But to be get to get told at now 10, 11, 12 that sorry, it's not quite for you. So I take you know our academy takes a lot of those you know players in, and my particular team last season. Um, you know, seven of the, the players who come into the side are now back in academies because, you know, I'm trying, you know, give them the confidence back, um, believe in themselves, you know, work on their strengths and their negatives. Um, you know, and it's just any any youngsters listening, any parents of youngsters who are, who've got, you know, desire to be a footballer. If you're told no at such a young age, it's not, it's not the end. There was one particular boy who who was released by a championship club. Um, he was. They, they told him that he couldn't get around the park, you know, so he'd come to play for me at a grassroots level. You know, I, I, I helped him. I, I, I communicated with him on a, you know, on a weekly basis, you know, with his parents as well and his granddad who, who took him around everywhere. Um, you know, and now he's at, um, now he's at a Cat One Academy and they've given him a contract until he's 16. So just goes mm -hmm. to show you, you can, be, you can be told no. What Also, one of my players went to the side for Liverpool. So, um, it gives me great joy and great pleasure to see these, you know, kids have a second opportunity. And listen, at the end of the day, it's down to them. It's down to those kids if they've got, if they've chosen the right pathways, if they've got the support around them, you know. But, you know, you imagine, like, my son's 17. He's a first-year scholar at Manchester United and I've watched him many a time against the Blues. You know, Jude Bellingham played against my son. And I remember the first time watching Jude play. Wow. I said to my boy when I got in the car, he is something else. He was the best player on the park. He was, you know, absolutely brilliant. His awareness, you know, his arrogance, you know, with and without the ball. You know, he wasn't over arrogant, but you, you need that little bit of arrogance to be successful. And I just thought, as soon as I seen him, I think it was a 13-14. And I remember Jude, you know, I was behind the goal watching. And obviously, you know, he's a Blues fan, isn't he? And I remember he seen me watching my, you know, the, the game. And I give him a little nod and he gave me a little nod back. And I just thought that kid has got something special. And there's no surprise to me that, you know, the fees being talked about. Um, the one that, and, you know, I watched him, I think Man United played against Birmingham at St Andrews you know, at the end of the season on the first team pitch. And I remember seeing him then again, and he was, again, the best player on the pitch. But I thought where he would struggle, and this is just my personal opinion, was without the ball. Because when you're that good, when you're going through the ranks, you know, you, you're the best player. Everybody gives you the ball. And sometimes you forget about go, going back towards your own goal. So I thought one thing that might let him down is, and you guys can tell me different in the championship, is work ethic without the ball to get back. Because I thought to go to that next level, 
you know, the best players in the world with and without the ball. You look at Messi, and listen, I'm not comparing Jude Bellingham to Messi, but I'm saying is the best players in the world without the ball, they work ever so hard. Look at Frank Lampard, look at Paul Scholes, you know, but with the ball, Jude Bellingham I, was the best I've seen. Uh, uh, and I've seen lots of youth football with my son going everywhere. And he's the best I've seen. And obviously he's progressing to the first team. Huge fees with Dortmund and, and Manchester United being, you know, tightened about. But there's no surprise. But the one thing I thought that might let him down, but, I, you know, but I've not seen much of him recently, is without the ball. And you guys can tell me, different, you know, what he like without the ball. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, he's 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 pretty good. He's pretty hot. He's uh, <laughs> going to go all the way without a doubt, isn't he? You know, and uh, what a shame that a, a club with bears the name of Birmingham City cannot keep hold of players like that. You know, it breaks our hearts, mate. Breaks our. Listen, I you know the, the financial, you know, you know what you'll get for Jude, you know, will help massively. You know, for the for for the for the next manager, whoever that may be. But what I'll say is, what an outstanding talent you know that he was when I see him he's the best I've ever seen at you know and I've watched so much football youth football yeah. but when I see him that night I come away from that ground I said to my boy wow wow check out his younger brother on YouTube Pardon? check out his yeah. younger brother on YouTube younger brother, I've seen his younger brother brother play listen obviously another fantastic talent um you know and usually the younger brother will you know sometimes will progress past their older sibling because you know they'll get kicked more. You know, I was a younger brother. You know, if you, I don't know if there's a stat, but the younger brother who, you know, sometimes will go on to be the better player because they've had to fight against everything, you know, and I've seen Jude's brother and he's a, he's a very good player, but I've got to say, Jude Bellingham is the best y- youngster I've ever seen. He was incredible. Super. I'm going to take just a minute, Rob, just to read a few reactions out that are coming through. And uh, apparently, Rob Knight says, you gave my sister as your... Kick racism out, uh, out shirt away at Southampton to a first ever game. He was my hero and he gave it to her. Ian Clayton, my late father, loved Robbie. He used to sing, We love you, Robbie, because we got blonde hair. Thanks for the great time, Sav. Eight, legend, eight, keep right on, Stuart Rose. Uh, grassroots and outside <laughs> such worthy causes. Nice one, Robbie, keep right on, Carol Sandlin. I have PTSD and that kind of stuff. It's own. Love you all, Thomas Lockwood. Oh, man, there's just so, so many nice, nice, nice messages coming in. Uh, you know what? I love this, the song. I still, my mum, my mum still sings a song to me now. So, um, we love you, Robbie, because you've got blonde hair. We love you, Robbie, because you're everywhere. We love you, Robbie, because you play for the blues. We love you, Robbie. Listen, I still, my mum still sings oh, no, it. I remember it. I remember it. Yeah, I remember, I remember it. Robbie. Robbie, I remember going up to Newcastle. I remember going up to Newcastle when the referee elbowed you in the face and we were all singing that. Yeah, it was pretty, you know, um, there was a video put out this week about, I think it was Amazon um, Prime Video said uh, something we all love to see. It was, I think it was Matt Messias, you know, giving me, yeah. you know, giving it me. Um, and do you know what, that game, I'm not sure. What was the date of that game? You can tell me. What was the what? Everything. What he was the date? Oh, the date. Oh, God. I know it was August. I know it was August 2003, but I don't know the date. I don't know the actual number. You've let me down. You've August? let me down, Paul. Uh, was it August 2003? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was the start of the 03 04 season. Yeah. We won 1 0, didn't we? David Dunn got the rebound off the penalty. Because in the, in the, in the May, I'm sure I played against Newcastle for the, was it for Leicester for the Blues? When my, when my son was born. On the, so that must have, my son was born the um, 2nd of May um, 2000. <laughs> Three. Yeah. So I would have been at, I'd have been at Leicester or, that, or Birmingham then. No, you'd been at, you'd have been at Blues then. Blues, yeah. So I'm sure I played against Newcastle when my I was in hospital with my wife. She gave birth to our, our son Charlie 17 years ago. Wow, 17 years ago. And I went up to my dad drove me up to Newcastle to play for the Blues. I think it was Newcastle. I might be wrong, but I might. I, I yeah. was thinking it might be in that game. But obviously, it was. Yeah. No, no, sure. Well, any, um... Edgington, all the way from Queensland in Australia, will be difficult to top this guest. You're a benchmark, Robbie. Wow. Um... <laughs> I, 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 I understand people, people, you know, want, some blues fans 
will think I was a disgrace. I let them down. I did. And I remember coming away from that Solly Hull game, the reserve game, and I I was in the car. Do you know what? At the time, I was just thinking, I don't really care. I just want to leave. I want to leave. And and to this day, you know, you know, if I ever tell my boy, my boy's, boy's read my book, and it's all in my book, and the way I handle myself, a disgrace, a disgrace. Yeah, if but we, 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 dealt, we dealt with that earlier. We dealt with that earlier. Phone. What's, what's phone. coming through now as messages of support? Tracy Hemming, love you, Robbie. Des Fox, Top Banana. Stephen Gill, Robbie, you're a legend. Steve Harley, Robbie, we love you because you got blonde hair. <laughs> Ricky Seal, brilliant. Yes, Robbie, my love growing even more for this guy. Told you guys from Dave Quine. Robbie Savage, a blues legend. This is just, I'm just reading them as they're coming in. Like, you know, I mean, love you, Robbie. You're a top fan. Another great legend. There's got to be some horrible. All is forgiven, Robbie. You're welcome back at the blues. I thought I would like to walk out at St. Andrews, you know, um, because even people behind the scenes, the staff, you know, I, I, I've been back, as I say, to watch my son at the end of the season when they, before they ripped the pitch up, you know, and all the staff are the same. And, you know, I did love it. I did love it. And the staff, do you know what I mean? So I, I honestly, I'm just, by meaning this, I would wish one day I could walk out, but. You right, know, here I, you I, go. Ready for this? I could have. Number one, number one, we're going to organise it. Right? Well, I could, I'd get hammered, I'd get hammered. You, you know what? And you right, so, a, right, so. You might, you, you might get a few numpties, right? But I tell you what, the, the reaction tonight has not been what I thought it was going to be. I thought you was going to get so much negativity. But the, the, these people absolutely have taken on board what you said earlier, right? And that's your perfect explanation for what happened. It's passed. It's done. You wore the badge. You kissed it. You're a legend. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'd understand if I got hammered because I was wrong. Just um, just another question, sorry, a question I forgot yeah. to ask. One of our one of our backroom team, Adam Wilkes, is asking you, Robbie, who was your best mate at the Blues to do social stuff with? And did he confide in that person privately when he wanted to join Mark Hughes at Blackbird? And what was their reaction? Um, see, me, me, me mate was Mark Bowen, the assistant manager, but obviously, you know, I couldn't put him in a in a difficult situation. Do you know what I mean? Because he was Mark Hughes's very good mate as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So you imagine that I've got my mate, Mark Boyd, who was big mates with Sparky, but is the Blues assistant manager. So I would never have put him in that situation. I would have confided in him, but I couldn't put him in that difficult situation. You know, the horse and, you know, but I kept myself to myself, you know, so I was never really one for going out social, as I've alluded to. Um, Dwight York was the one I, 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 I was quite close to because I thought I'd try and use his experiences, you know, um, you know, um, and he was a shoulder who I, I, I leaned on. Um, mm. Do you know what I mean? So there was nobody really I, I, I can find it because in football, in football, and I've always said this, that I've probably got three or four friends out of football. The rest are acquaintances mm. because football is the best sport in the world, but let's not forget that people want your place. And if you're performing, somebody's there to take your place. And, you know, how many, as I've said it, that you can have loads of friends when you're at a club, but how many of those players in pre-season are going to do your running for you? How many of those are going to go that extra yard for you? If, you know, how many of those will be happy if you're injured and, you know, they get a chance? So, you know, I had lots of friends when I was at clubs, but now... You know, most of those have become acquaintances, who, and I've probably only got four or five friends from football who I could yeah. really rely upon. Mm. Do you know what the best thing is about this, this show, um, Robbie? Is is that you know what we're three blokes usually in a room. Yeah, we go to the games. We sit in different parts of the ground. We occasionally meet up there, and then we always meet up on a Monday night. And we're three Birmingham City supporters who just talk passionately about the Blues. And, uh, and and just want the best for everything and for everybody at the football club, whether that's, you know, Manky Pies or, or, you know, K2 security, it doesn't matter. We'll discuss anything when we're open and we're dead honest on it, right? We're bang on the button with it. There's no hidden agendas, right? We've asked you the questions. You've given superb answers tonight. And it's been an absolute joy and a pleasure, it really has, honestly. Mm. Mm. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. And... Yeah. and, and yeah. When all this malarkey is over, right, I want you and Devlin to come down and have a night in the studio with us, but no fighting. In our new, <laughs> in our new studio, not, by the way. Not in the nude. <laughs>
no, no fighting in the new in our new <laughs> studio. <so. laughs> well, listen, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. And honestly, listen, I've you know, I don't do many podcasts, but I just thought that you know, as you say, three three guys chatting football with a passion. I'm passionate about football. You know, I think I should you know give back. You know, because when I ask people to do a podcast for me, and you, you know, you think it's shy, ask them, but the amount of people do stuff for me. So I'm always in a position where if somebody asks me, I feel like I should. You know, again, we're all passionate about football. It's tough times out there. You know, as you said about, you know, to talk to people, that's imperative. So it's a great cause. And, you know, it's been a, it's been mm. my privilege and an honour. Thank you. Sorry, I've just got a couple of shout outs, Robbie. Uh, can you say um, hello to Sally Courtney? That'll make her day. Hello, Sally Courtney. How are you? Hope you're well. A happy birthday for the 6th of July, Mark, Sim- Mark Simmons. It's his 60th, a big one. Happy 60th birthday, Mark Simmons. And lastly, uh, we believe that Leighton, who we spoke off air about, we believe he's he's, uh, he's actually watching, but he's he's a bit tired, so he might be going in and out and that like. But uh, if you can say hello to that chap. Hi, right, Leighton, how are you? I've tried to... Um... To call you on um, four occasions, on four occasions, I totally understand, you know, the circumstances why you would not answer. So, you know, I've, I've been reluctant to, to leave a message. So, I, I want to speak to you in person. Um, you know, the guys have told me about your situation. I'm here to help, to support. You know, you have my number. You know, obviously, you know, don't give it out, uh, but you have my number. And if it, you know, if you ever need the field to ring me at any time, day or night, you know, for a chat, please ring me. Wow. Mm. Wow. Fantastic. That's just blown me away, That's man. Big. Goosebumps. And that video, that video is amazing, I'll, isn't it, as I'll well? I'll show you this one, really goosebumps. The Where video of Lane coming out of intensive care was fantastic, wasn't it? Great to see that. Oh, great. Yeah. Ah, oh, superb. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've had, we've had, we're aware of other people that have lost close family, relatives, Birmingham City yeah. fans have, have succumbed to this. And it's not over. So, you know, and we give this message out every single week, just, just, do what you're being asked to do at all times, right? Whether that's your social distance. And I don't agree personally with the shops opening this week. I don't, you know, it should have gone on for a few weeks longer. Um, but who am I to say? I'm no scientist. It's just that I just, I don't know. I, I just, I just cannot, cannot for the life of me even imagine a second wave of this thing coming and taking more people. It's been, it's been a horrible, horrible year, right? When the Queen said, and it's horrible, she had no idea because this has been the worst year of my life without a doubt. And and it, yeah, right, it hasn't affected anybody of me, me personally, um, uh, but we do know of, of of people that have you know been taken by this cruel evil disease, and it's indiscriminate, completely indiscriminate. And that's why you should just take so much care of what you're doing. Mm. And one 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 very last question from me, Robbie. Who's the be- who would you say is the best player you've ever played against? Steven Gerrard. You know, I was very fortunate. You know, I played against. Pirlo, Rivaldo, Ronaldo, you know, Keane, Vieira. Oh, you're not named dropping, are you? I'm just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, Steven Gerrard, Steven Gerrard was just, Frank Lampard, wow. But Steven Gerrard was, was incredible. He could do everything, couldn't he? I'd say, what, the Blues, we had a good record against Liverpool, didn't we? I remember we went up there, I said to the winner for Darren Anderson, didn't I? 1-0. Yeah. <laughs> Big ups and nodded it back, but you put the free kick in. That's it, the free kick. That's it. Yeah, so you that's it. And we also big ups and nodded it back across the goal. And I'm not. I'm not being funny, Robbie. We say this every week. He's like a savant. Honestly, his memory is do you just. Remember, do you remember? Do you remember one one moment which probably was was some my Birmingham career up? I think it was against Liverpool at home, and it was the referee had given a drop ball in the middle of the park, and it was kicked towards the corner flag. Do you remember? And I, I sprinted the whole length of the pitch and slid tackle and put out for the throwing right there in the last few minutes. And we kept them in the corner and won the game. Do you remember that game? No. But was that the one when you yeah, fell over? Is that, is that when you fell no, over running out of the stop? I was talking to Danny Murphy and I tripped over oh. the carpet, didn't I? But <laughs> 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 well, less I'm like you, I'm like you guys. I love talking football. I can stay on. I love listen, football is is what I've always done and I you know, when people stop you and say, I bet you ain't talking football. Oh, I love it. I love reminiscing. I love, you know, sitting with, you know, the older generation, reminiscing the stories when they went to games. You know, I could sit here all day and talk to football fans because I'm a football person. I love football. Mm. You know, I, I, 
I'm very fortunate now. I can do every Sunday on six or six and on the TV. You know, it's my opinion. Some people disagree with it, but I'll never stop talking. And you know, I love it. I'll watch every game. I'll, you know, volunteer at grassroots, which I love. Do you know what I mean? There's no better site than I'm competitive at that, by the way, as well. You know, we, um, um, but to see, you know, my team progress and, you know, seeing the kids now, you know, getting opportunities. Again, you're right about the social distancing and people adhering to the rules, you know. We've had to put training sessions on now for, for our group. No more than six in one group. That includes the coach, you know, with social distancing and safeguarding. And the new normal is going to be different for a while. But, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd say please adhere because what we do not want, you know, is a, is a, is a second wave. Mm. Yeah, it would be very destructive, um, not just for the economy, obviously for sport and, and, and for human life as well. So, so just be safe, people. Listen, mm. wow. Um, I don't know where that's gone to. That's just been that's off the scale. Am I allowed, am I allowed am I... one more question? Very yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Best, best, best player you've ever played with? Best player I ever played with. Um, listen, I was very fortunate, you know, growing up in the class of 92, you know, but, you know, they weren't the players they were, you know, in the class of 92 that they went on to be, you know, like Paul Scholes, one of the best midfielders ever, David Beckham, you know, Gary Neville, one of the best right backs. Um, the person I would say, you know, Ryan Giggs for Wales, incredible. But the person I would say was two guy at Blackburn, you know, absolutely wow, yeah. incredible player. Wow. You know, you know, and what a guy as well that when I signed for, he was number eight. And when I signed for, for Blackburn um, in that move, the, the day I was at the training ground, he said, oh, he, he shouted me over. He went, oh, um, you want to take my place? I said, no, no, I want to play with you. And he said, you want my number? I went, no. He said, you can have my number. And he went, Sparky, Sparky to the gaffer. He went, Robbie, number eight, next season. And I went, wow. He went, yeah, really. And he said, give me number eight. And he changed his number for me. So oh, what a guy. You know, I went to Turkey recently to um, to Rio Ferdinand's wedding. Um, I'm just name dropping again, Nick, before you put in. Uh, <laughs> um, um, and, you know, me and my wife, we, we stopped in Istanbul for the night. And two guy organised, you know, for us to go to a restaurant. And he turned up and, you know, turned up, drove an hour to see us. You know, sat with us, um, you know, paid the bill at the end of the night. You know, what a guy, an absolute legend, two guy, what a player. Mm, great player. I remember, I remember him getting a couple great of worldies player. against us as well at St Andrews. Great All right, player. be there, Paul. <laughs> I'll yeah, leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Sav, you know what, when you play across, you ran your heart out, you did, you gave everything. We all know that. We all know you left under a, a bit of a cloud. You've put that right tonight. You've explained yourself perfectly and honestly and openly and frankly. And I think that everybody that listens to this show is going to love you. Because yeah, you've okay. been a brilliant okay. start tonight, mate. Listen, brilliant. I'm, I'm not, and I'm not uh, too, amazing. I'm not, I'm not too big to say, listen, I'm sorry. Yeah, nice one. No, we appreciate that. As football fans, right? And you know, you know, if you're a football fan yourself, what team do you support? I'm a Wrexham fan. Wrexham. So yeah. you know if you're a football fan yourself and you know if you've stood on the terraces and if you know you've yeah. gone in the cold and the rain and the snow and, yeah, you yeah. know, you've broken down on the way back with two flat tyres yeah. and one thing and another, blah, blah, blah. You know what it means to us, yeah? I so no. I honestly appreciate yeah. everything you've said tonight and you've given me goosebumps so many times on the things you've said tonight, mate. Superb stuff. Listen, guys, thank you so much, everybody. Okay, yeah. this is the Talk Show. It's Monday night. We'll be back again next Monday. Guest next Monday is Paul. Darren Carter. Darren Carter. Darren Carter, obviously the uh, the, uh, the the Norwich penalty winner uh, who put us into the Premier League and which gave you your opportunity for work there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Kept you employed for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Paul Hipkiss. Good night all, it's been a pleasure. From Mrs Brown. <laughs> from myself, good night and keep right on. And from Robbie Savage, the legend that is. Good night and I'm sorry. Bless you, mate. Take care. <laughs>